we've got to help the children get back learning, get back to school. And that's as important as the life-saving work we're doing on health and malnutrition. Well, that's UNICEF's Deputy Executive Director talking about the effect groups like Boko Haram have on the education of children. The comments were made last week, around the same time a UNESCO report showed just how bad the situation is, both in and out of classrooms. Six out of ten children and teenagers worldwide aren't meeting even basic proficiency in reading and math. War and poverty are two of the main reasons for low levels of learning, but the latest research shows that while children might be in a classroom, the standard of teaching often leaves them without a proper education. Well, joining me now from Montreal to discuss these findings on education globally is Sylvia Montoya. She is the director of the UNESCO Institute for Statistics. Sylvia, thanks so much for joining us. First, let me get your personal take on these, this report that you helped produce. What disturbed you most about the conclusions here? Uh, good morning, and thank you, thank you for for the invitation to actually to join and to share with you our work. I think that the, one of the most decisive points, and and the, the fact that has uh, actually surprised uh, everybody here, the the team that has been working on producing this report, is the fact that most of the kids are within the school. That uh, means that they already we have done a great effort in actually to try to bring them to school and to try to put them into classrooms. But there is something that we're doing wrong. We're not doing enough effort eventually in some aspects. There are not only only issues from the educational side, but on the social side that could help to explain. But the fact that they're in school and we have the possibility to do something to help them and to try to avoid that they drop out and they reach a good level of learning is something that is also a strong message for all of us, that we have the possibility still to do something and to do some actions and some tools to implement some policy to help. They are in school, most of them. We have to help them within the school environment and trying to see how we could help them better. So they are in school, but are good teachers what's actually lacking? No, I don't think that, they, that they, this is the only cause that we have. We have a multiplicity of causes that actually explain low levels of learning. We know that still we face difficulties with poverty and with low levels of incomes. The family still needs some help to try to support the kids. It's not only about money. There's money, this money is a help, but we need to actually to support them in the possibility of offering a proper pedagogical environment in terms of, a, of how the resources, in many cases, the parents are not having a good level of education and they need to help their kids. So we have uh, some issues on the social side. Within the school, we still, yes, we have some issues that are related to the infrastructure of the school. We know that the school facilities in some cases may be difficult for the kids to stay. In some cases, the water facilities are not good enough. Toilets uh, is a surprise for some of us that live in developed countries, but it's not a surprise for many developing countries that the school infrastructure does not provide the best uh, learning environment. Some day kids lose classes or day of school because of the, of the problem in infrastructure. And then the teachers are doing a, a good effort a great effort in many of the environment. In very adverse conditions, we have the possibility and we have, we are work all over the planet that we see how difficult is the daily life of teachers, but still they have difficulties. They need also some more support in terms of having some pedagogical tools for the kids that come with more difficulties for learning. So we know that there are a combination of, uh, of uh, tools and skills that are needed, the, the combination of policy to support. And though it is easy to, to actually to blame teachers for the problem, they, they are not the only problem. They are the solution. Many of them are doing a kind of a, 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 an effort that is incredible. And many of us don't give the, the, the right value and the right support, and they need more support from us. So I, okay. I we really don't think that this is a cause. Okay, fair enough. Then help us better understand where the solutions actually lie. I mean, a few years ago, I remember there was so much optimism about the role technology could play in helping educate, especially students in disadvantaged areas. That didn't quite result uh, the way that many had hoped. But do you still see any potential in technology or are the solutions elsewhere? No, definitely. There are a combination of solutions, but starting by technology, that is precisely what you have asked. 
we think that the, it has been actually starting to, to provide help in not only in tracking record of where the kids are and who they are, that is a actually very good uh, help in many cases in many countries, but still there are many developments that need to be done to adequate the technology and to actually to spread the work of technology in some environments, which there are still development of applications, some kind of tool that could help the teachers and could help them in the in the role they are and to governments and families. But we know that in many cases there are problems of a, of a, of money that it impedes to actually to have access. And there is a need to spread a little bit more in terms of the pedagogical implementation at the classroom level. Okay, Sylvia Montoya, unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us on this edition of the Newsmakers.